A neuron is like two trees held together by a circle. The circle is the soma, the cell body. It contains all the subunits necessary for cell life. These subunits include the nucleus and a number of lesser structures called organelles. The soma uses the RNAs from the nucleus to produce proteins. Some of these proteins are used locally, and others are transported down the axons to the axon terminals and back again. The soma also contains protein molecules that are stuck inside it. They are too big to pass through the wall of the cell, so they just sit there. But these molecules hold a negative electrical charge. So the inside of the neuron is negative compared to outside its membrane wall. The neuron also contains chloride, which is negatively charged. With all this negativity, the obvious solution to the cell's imbalance is to bring more positive ions from outside the cell to inside the cell. Sodium has one positive charge, but it's too big to cross the cell wall easily. If there was a door to go through, sodium could rush in, but it can't easily seep in. The cell membrane is only semi-permeable. Not everything can go through it. Potassium has one positive charge, and it crosses the membrane more easily than sodium, but it's still not easy going. There's another problem. Every time two potassium ions come in, three sodium ions have to go out. It's a built-in pump-sodium-out mechanism. So clearly the only way to get equilibrium is to open some doors. With open doors, the big guys, chloride and sodium, could trade places. Potassium and sodium could rush in, chloride could rush out, and everybody would be happy. Another big help would be calcium. Calcium has two positive charges, so allowing calcium in would be a big boost to achieving balance. But ions don't like sharing gates. Each gate is ion-specific. Sodium has its own gates, and potassium has potassium-specific gates, etc. Also, ions worry more about their specific concentration than the charge of the neuron. So when a gate opens, the rush is from lots to less, regardless of whether they are on the outside or inside the cell. At rest, there are a lot of sodium ions outside of the cell and lots of potassium ions inside. So here's what happens. As the dendrites are stimulated, a positive potential inside the cell increases. A neuron is typically about negative 70 millivolts. A little shift in the positive direction to negative 65 or negative 60 doesn't cause any major change. It's like going from minus 75 degrees to minus 60 degrees. It's still really, really cold. But once the voltage nears negative 55 millivolts, several things happen. First, the sodium gate near the stimulated dendrite opens, and some sodium rushes into the cell. This makes the cell more positive. This internal rush also activates other sodium channel gates to open, causing a huge influx of sodium. As sodium comes in, the voltage rapidly changes from negative to positive. This is called depolarization, heading to the other pole. The cell had a negative charge, now it's headed toward becoming positive. As the sodium gates open, the potassium gates open too, but they're slow. They don't actually get open until the sodium gates start to close. When the potassium gates open, potassium rushes out because there's more potassium inside than out. Ions aren't very smart. They don't measure the polarity of the cell and adjust to it. Their primary concern is to spread out. Their goal is to balance the two sides, regardless of the impact their electrical charges have on the cell. When potassium ions rush out their gates, the polarity has already changed from negative 70 millivolts to positive 30 millivolts. So the potassium exit actually reduces the positive charge inside the neuron. In fact, by the time the potassium channels have closed, so many of the potassium ions have left the interior of the cell that the neuron is even more negatively charged than before. This hyperpolarization doesn't last long. With all the gates closed, there's more potassium outside the cell than inside the cell. But potassium is little, so some potassium leaks back into the cell until the voltage is back to negative 70 millivolts.